Thank you for joining us on Data Cloud Now, where we bring you the latest in all things data in business and industry. Today, we are going to explore some exciting new technology out of the world of golf that will help elevate your game. I'm delighted to be joined by Sal Saeed, CEO and co-founder of Arcus Golf. Sal, such a pleasure to have you on the program today. Thank you for having me, Ryan. Really appreciate it. Sal, to start with, for those unfamiliar with Arcus Golf, can you provide a quick overview and explain how golfers can integrate this technology to improve their game? Yep, absolutely. Um, so we make hardware and software it's sensors, very small sensors that connect to your club. They attach to the grip end of the club and they pair with your smartphone. Um, and that's all really as a user that you do. And then when you go out on the golf course, we track every shot you take. Um, and by virtue of tracking that, uh, we're able to give you uh, your strengths and weaknesses. Where are you losing strokes? Where are you gaining strokes? And this is the same data that PGA Tour players have uh, with that amazing system that PGA Tour players have called ShotLink. Uh, we're providing that to literally every golfer out there. Um, and this allows you to answer questions like, you know, I'm a 15 handicap and I want to improve by five shots this year. What's my lowest hanging fruit? Where should I focus? What lessons should I take? Uh, um, and what, what should I practice? And literally, we give you the exact answers um, and our average user in their first season improves by five strokes. I absolutely love it. I think you're speaking to me actually, Sal. I'm right around that 15 handicap mark. Let's dive into the details. <laughs> What's the collective yeah. data showing you? So, I mean, you know, uh, the biggest thing I can tell you is um, there's a cognitive bias among golfers. So we remember our best shots or our worst shots. And then we make our decisions of like, let's say you're going to hit an eight iron. You might make that decision based on um, like your best shot that you remember instead of your average shot. So people overestimate how far they hit their clubs. Uh, we help you understand that. So like initially it can be like an ego hit. Uh, but then we very quickly our users realize, you know, while I don't hit it as far as I do, as I thought I did, I can make decisions uh, based on reality. And then our average user ends up getting like, uh, I think we're like, we increase the odds of a hole in one, one by like 5.7 times. Um, so, so the collective data is telling us many, many different things. Uh, one of them being people overestimate their ability. And the second is um, there isn't like one answer, like, hey, here's the thing that you should be doing as a golfer to get better. It's a different answer for everybody because we're all different people with different things happening in our lives, different bodies, different skill levels, different, like I would, I would say, life cycle of where we are as a golfer. Um, and so there isn't one answer. The only answer is you need to figure out, you need to capture your data so you can figure out what the answer is for you. Where should you be focused on? Should you be focused on putting from 25 to 50 feet? Should you be focused on putting from three to five feet, should you be hitting your, like, focused on your approach shots from 150 to 200 yards? Those are the answers we're able to give you, but there isn't one answer that will be like, here, here it is for everybody. There isn't a silver bullet. Great to hear that perspective, Sal. Now I wanna dive into the data cloud. How is it helping you and the team make the everyday golfer better? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, uh, Brian, we've recorded over a billion shots. And I think uh, last time we did the calculation, I was like, we have, uh, two libraries of Congress worth of data uh, on golfers, on golf shots and golf conditions and everything, which is, I mean, it blew my mind when I thought about that. And um, and so by virtue of recording all those shots, we're able to actually, I mean, when I said like, you know, we're able to answer like, how do you get from a 15 to a 10 handicap? It sounds like a very simple thing to answer, but it's actually a very complicated question uh, because that answer isn't the same for every 15 handicapper. It's like literally different if you're a 65 year old male who's driving at 180 yards versus it could be a 65 year old male who's driving at 250 yards and different answers different and they might be scoring the same thing. And the reason Arcos is able to give those answers is, I mean, honestly, um, wouldn't be possible without uh, the Snowflake data cloud. We've captured every single shot we've ever recorded and now we're able to create benchmarks. We're able to create uh, profiles of what an average 10 or 15 handicapper does so that we can show you against the, those baselines. And the reason we're able to create those baselines, which we use um, neural net uh, for, 
um, is because we have all this data. And when we create those baselines, then we can measure you against those baselines and tell you like, hey, this is where you're losing or gaining strokes on any given shot. Um, and those are all fractions of things. I mean, it's, it's a complicated equation, complicated math, then that gets super simplified into like, hey, if you work on your driving distance, for example, you'll gain 2.2 strokes around. Um, so, but that's really what we're doing. Great to hear how the data cloud is able to provide actionable insights for, for your customers. Sal, I want to pivot slightly. The hot topic in tech right now is all around Gen AI. How is this playing a role at Arcus Golf and what impact do you see it having on the overall game of golf? Yeah, yeah. So, so I think generative AI, obviously amazing technology that's like being uh, available, like now it's available um, to, um, we're, not, we're not totally a startup, but we consider ourselves still a startup. Um, and the things that it'll allow us to do are really, I mean, uh, I'd say like the natural language interaction with your data to get answers about like, um, like I'll tell you like th th this is obviously, um, we haven't released or launched any of this, um, but I have access to some of the cool stuff and I can ask it like, you know, over the last month, um, what were some of the best trends uh, you saw in my game? Uh, golf GPT and, and, and then getting those answers, like looking at that, that data and analyzing it. I, I think like the beauty of it is uh, there's so many, um, I would say unanswered and unstructured questions in uh, people's minds and golfers' minds about themselves. Um, and being able to um, write them out in English and then, um, or, or natural language, uh, and then have um, <clears throat> the LLM go in, look at all this crazy amounts of data, and then answer those un unbelievably. And it could be simple things like show me the longest, uh, like what's the longest streak I've ever had of pars, and how does that compare to an average goal for my skill level? Now you have like this whole, like let's say the 1 billion shots of Arcos that's accessing and your data and comparing that. I mean, those kinds of things aren't really possible unless you have a technology like this, like generative AI. So it's like pretty amazing that um, like it really does, I would say, unleash the human mind in terms of interaction with data, asking data questions. Um, it really humanizes it in some way, shape or form where like these are the questions you might ask if you had like a golf savant who knows all your data sitting next to you. Those are conversations you would have. Now you could potentially have that uh, with I mean, through actually generative AI with Arcos data, which is going to be like, really interesting and exciting. It's like walking around with the best caddy possible right at your fingertips, Sal. Yeah, best caddy, best coach, best, like, I mean, better, best everything. I mean, it's going to be fascinating. Like, I'm, I'm actually, like, really, um, obviously, like, with all the um, stuff that ChatGPT is trained on or these other LLM models are trained on uh, on golf, like, when you mesh that, with um, like all the Arcos data we have, like it's it's going to be really interesting how what comes out of that. Like honestly, it'll blow our minds. Like we're not even um, sure where that's going to go, but we are very excited about it because like the early possibilities we see, the early tests we see, they're just super powerful. It's an exciting next chapter indeed, Sal. I can hear the passion in your voice. Golf is clearly near and dear to you. I want to focus on you for a moment, Sal. What were your founding principles in creating Arcus Golf? So I would say like founding principles, there's probably twofold. One is um, on the golf side. So when I was starting Arcos, I was working on improving my game. I was like about a seven index and getting better and realized, you know, like this problem, like I read a survey in the National Golf Foundation uh, which said like 84% of golfers play golf to get better at golf and made me realize I wasn't unique. Uh, but it also made me realize one thing, which was when somebody says, I want to get better at golf, it really is your golf score. Very simply like that score, how do you improve that? And nobody was deconstructing that. Like when you shoot a 75 versus an 85 versus a 95, 105, what's the difference? Um, and the, like I said, the key realization that I had was we need to capture everything and anything we can while the golfer is golfing because within that within the deconstruction uh within the capture of that we'll be able to that's how we're going to be able to deconstruct that score and then provide answers and insights and that's so i'd say like our founding principle is we believe um the on course the performance data in golf is the most important data and we are not only the best at capturing it 
we're also the best at analyzing it. Um, and then I would say from like uh, the perspective of working at Arcos, um, my philosophy and our company philosophy um, is, I mean, we actually say like we're kids, um, and we're kids with a C. We, we really value curiosity, uh, which really ties into this LLM model to like, we really do that uh, where <clears throat> we really value innovation. We want to innovate. Uh, but we don't want to innovate for just the sake of innovation. We actually want to create things. So we, the D part is doers. We are doers. We build technology that people can use that uh, will impact their lives. So we're like kids with a C. Um, and we want to come to work every single day feeling like we're going to a playground. And um, and that's what we really do. So that's, I would say that maybe on the work side, that's how we think about work. But on the side of um, what we're doing, it's we believe um, on course data is the holds the keys to all the answers in your golf life, whether it's how to get better, what clubs to play with, what golf balls to play with, which golf shoes should I be wearing? All of that, the answers lie within that. And we capture that and we're going to be exposing the answers. And like as technologies like generative AI and others like, I mean, uh, come out, we'll be applying those so that um, golfers have maybe like I would say that golfers get that much more pleasure out of the game that they so much love. Well, Sal, as a mid handicap golfer on a good day, I want to say thank you. Can't wait to work <laughs> this into my bag. But before we go, what advice would you like to share with the other founders watching here today? I think, uh, I mean, the maybe one piece, maybe two pieces. Um, one is, um, like, it's actually, I'm stealing this from my high school. The motto was perseverance commands success. So um, you'll have high highs and low lows. It's like an emotional investment um, when you um, do a startup. So I think having the perspective that, yeah, you're going to be, you're going to have great days and they're going to feel like you're like doing everything amazing. And the next day you're going to be down in the dumps and feeling like nothing's going to work. Um, but just uh, recognizing that that's part of what you signed up for is important. It helps you get through the lows. Um, and then the second piece is, um, try to think about testing with data like as quickly I mean, you're never going to have perfect information because i think by the time you have perfect information maybe you have made the decision too late try to get some data maybe a 70 percent answer and then make a decision and then learn from that so rather than not making a decision make a decision and learn from it because that's also data in itself so those two things i would share well, Sal, thank you so much for your time and your insights and for joining me on Data Cloud Now. Our next conversation, let's do it out on the golf course. All right, awesome, Ryan. Thank you for having me. That's an absolute pleasure, Sal. Thanks again.